Okay, in this PowerPoint, we're going to be looking at the different ways that you can store energy. We're going to look at system schemas, which helps us figure out where energy might be hiding. And then we're going to look at energy pies, which is a kind of visual way to see how energy is stored um, as time um, progresses in a system. So the different energy storages that we're going to look at are gravitational potential energy, which we're going to use the symbol EG for that. That's energy stored in a gravitational field of a system. It's only important when there is a change in height. So for instance, we have this apple falling from the tree. As an apple falls, the height decreases, and so too does the EG decrease. Kinetic energy, EK, is energy stored in moving objects. So here we have this car, it slows down. As the car slows to a stop, its speed decreases. So too does the EK decrease. Elastic energy storage, EEL, is energy stored in stretching or compressing things like springs or rubber bands. So wristwatches nowadays a lot of times have batteries, but they used to have kind of a wind-up mechanism, which meant they had a, bat, uh, a spring inside of it. Um, sometimes you'll see wind-up toys or wind-up, um, let's say, uh, wind-up cars that you kind of pull back. They have a spring inside of it, and as you twist this up, you're actually making the spring tighter and tighter, and that increases the elastic energy. But as this wrist, wrist watch runs down, the coil that spring inside the wrist watch relaxes, and so the elastic energy decreases. Chemical energy storage, e -chem. This is energy stored in the bonds between molecules. It's found in food, gas, oil, coal, batteries. So when you have this jogger that's running, he's working out. As time goes on, his e -chem decreases, and it'll keep on decreasing until he replenish it, replenishes it by eating some food. Dissipative energy storage, e -dis. It's energy stored as thermal energy or sound energy, which is a result of a collision and or friction. This form of storage always increases. So here we have the starfish rubbing his hands together, and as he rubs his hands together, friction causes them to get warmer, so the amount of E-dis increases. Okay, now we're going to look at um, system schemas. System schemas are a simple way to identify all the components of a system of objects um, and helps to increase, uh, helps to identify the places energy may be present and can help to identify how energy moves throughout the system. So how to make a system schema? Well in this case we're looking at the apple falling from the tree. First thing is you identify all the objects that are touching and write them down giving yourself plenty of space between each word. Include the earth in this list of things that are touching. And if the ground is also being touched, include a separate word for both earth and for the ground, two separate words. So for instance, in this example, the tree, the apple, the earth, and the ground are going to be in the system schema. The second thing, put a circle, circle around each word. Simple enough. Third thing, draw double-headed arrows between each circle if the circled objects ever touched. The earth touches everything through the force of gravity, so you're going to draw a double-headed arrow between the earth and everything. Also, if there's any sliding that's occurring, you're going to have two double-headed arrows between those objects that are touching during the, sl the sliding. So the earth is going to touch everything, so there's going to be an arrow between the earth and the tree, earth and the apple, earth and the ground. The apple touches the tree, and the apple touches the ground when it hits the ground and also the ground and the tree are touching. Okay, then the last thing is to enclose the system with a dashed circle. If the system is not identified for you in the problem, then you need to put a circle around everything that makes it as easy as possible. So there you go. That's how you make a system schema. Pretty simple. Energy pies are a great visual tool to see how energy is stored in a system. How to make energy pies. 
you must carefully examine the problem and decide which energy storages might be present. The things you should be looking for is or are, is there a change in height? If so, there must be EG. Is there anything moving? If so, then you must include EK. Are there any springs or rubber bands? If so, you must have E-elastic. Are there any biological organisms, batteries, or fueled machines? If so, you have to have E-chem. Is there any collisions or rubbing of surfaces? If so, there must be e dis So, looking at this, we definitely had a change in height, so there's gravitational energy stores, e.g. And there was definitely some motion, so EK is going to be involved in kinetic energy. But I didn't see any springs or rubber bands, so no elastic. I didn't see any uh, fuel, gas, coal, oil, or food, or biological organisms, so I don't see any E uh, chem. Um, and let's say that there isn't any friction, there's no sliding, so there won't be any E deaths, just EG and EK. After we determine which energy storages must be included, then we need to decide how they change. So, as this wheel rolls down this ramp, the EG decreases because the height is decreasing. As the wheel rolls down the ramp, it speeds up, so the EK is going to be increasing. Now what we need to do is we have to draw a pie for each position shown. And we have to label those pies correspondingly. So let's call that first picture of the wheel at the very top A. And notice I've drawn a pie A. I put a dot in the center because that will help me divide up the pie later on. The next wheel down the ramp is B. So I'm going to make another pie B. And then finally near the bottom of the ramp is wheel C. So I've drawn another pie C. Notice all the pies are about the same size, or they are exactly the same size. Now we need to start with one of the identified energy storages and draw in how much of the pie it takes up for each pie. So let's just pick EG. So at the very top, it has a lot of height, but it doesn't have any speed. Notice in B, there's an arrow above B because it's moving. And in C, the arrow is much longer because it's much faster. But above A, there, are, there isn't an arrow, it's just a dot. That's because it's not moving. So that means all the energy storage at A is all EG. But at B, it's not as high, so it's lost some height. So now, there's going to be less EG. So in B, notice I've cut out a wedge. And the bigger part's EG still. Then at C, it's much lower, so it's lost a lot of height, and it's lost a lot of EG. So now it's going to have a very tiny wedge that has EG in it. Then we're going to pick another identified energy storage and continue as we did before until each energy storage is accounted for. Well in this case there was only two energy storages so that means the remainder part of the pie must be the other energy storage. So in B that remainder of the pie must be EK. And then in C, where it's a lot faster, that big section of pi that's not labeled must be EK. So here's the solution. There's the uh, system schema, the wheel, the ramp, the earth. The earth is touching both the wheel and the ramp. And of course, the wheel and the ramp are touching one another. And there's a dotted line around everything. And then the pies we just came up with. That's the solution. Let's try one more problem as a practice. So here we have this block that's sliding down this rough ramp. So the system schema would show the earth, the block, and the ramp. The earth touches the block through gravity, and it touches the ramp through gravity. The ramp is touching the block, and the reason why there's two arrows is because it says it's a rough ramp. It's sliding, so there's two arrows whenever they're sliding against another surface. And we put a dotted line around everything because everything's inside the system. As we looked at this block going down the ramp, we saw that the height changed. In fact, it decreased. So that means the EG decreases. But it sped up as it went down the ramp. So the EK increases because the speed it increases. Since there is friction and they're sliding, there's also going to be E-dis. 
the E dis increases because there's friction, and E dis always increases if it's present. I didn't see any springs, so there won't be an elastic, and I didn't see any gas or oil or anything like that, and there's no food or anything like that, so there's no chemical. So I'm going to have this as a pictorial way of remembering. The EG is going to decrease because the height decreases. The EK increases because the speed increases. And the E dis increases because there's friction and E dis always increases. So this first block at the top, I'm going to label that A and I have pi A. The next is B and I label that pi B and then C, pi C. Let's start with one of the energy storages. I could start with any of the energy storages, but I think I'm going to start with the EG again. So at the very top, it's not moving. Notice there's a dot above the A. It's not moving whatsoever. So that means it's not sliding yet. There's no motion yet. And so it just has a lot of height. That means at A, it's all gravitational energy storage. At B, it's lower, so not, not the entire pi is going to be EG. It lost a little bit. So I'm going to cut out a wedge. Notice the bigger part of the pi is still EG, though. And then in C, it's way down at the bottom, so there's hardly any height left. And so I'm just going to have a small wedge of EG. I could have made it smaller. It doesn't really matter, but it's definitely smaller. Okay, so that takes care of all the EG. Now I'm going to go to the next energy storage, EK. Notice the EK is increasing. So while there isn't any EK to A, at B, it's moving, so it's going to have some EK at B. Now, I can't give all of that wedge. Not all that wedge is going to be EK, because don't forget, I have another energy storage. So EK. And then at C, it's going even faster. So in C, I need a lot more EK, so maybe something like that. So it takes care of the EG and the EK. I only have one energy storage left, and it's the E dis. So that must be the missing wedge in B. And then also in C, notice going from B to C, the E dis increased. And that's it. Good luck.